Now, we don't need a constant reapplication of an external force to produce an initial displacement. If you push a child once on a swing, the swing will go back and forth and back and forth without you having to do anything else. So at equilibrium, you give the child a push. It goes to maximum displacement. The restoring force says get back to equilibrium. At equilibrium, inertia says keep on going and the swing goes in the opposite direction till it reaches maximum displacement. And it's this tug of war between the restoring force of elasticity and inertia. And elasticity, the restoring force wins. And eventually the swing will stop moving and it'll be back at equilibrium. But all it took was one force to get that swing moving. So imagine a tuning fork in air. We have molecules of air around the tuning fork equidistant from one another. And they're, they're just in their own little home base. Now a force is exerted on the tuning fork. And the first molecule closest to the tuning fork is displaced from its equilibrium. It is set into vibratory motion. Look at this picture, please. Look at molecule A going straight down vertically. Initially, it's at equilibrium. It's at rest. The tuning fork is displaced. A force is put on it. It pushes molecule A towards its maximum displacement. The restoring force of elasticity tells molecule A to get back to equilibrium. That's number three. Inertia says keep on moving. That's number four. The restoring force says get back. Number five. And if you go down the line, you see it's this back and forth pattern. This back and forth, back and forth with molecule A dancing around its equilibrium. It's not displaced any appreciable distance. It just goes back and forth around equilibrium until eventually the restoring force wins and it goes back home. But something else happens. As you can see in line two, as A is maximally displaced, it pushes on molecule B and molecule B gets displaced. Then it gets pulled back to equilibrium. Then it gets displaced because of inertia pulled back to equilibrium and it starts its own back and forth motion dancing around its equilibrium. Areas of high density are created. Look at the dark blue line. You have areas of compression where this chain reaction, these molecules are compressed together. And then if you look at the lighter line of blue, there are areas where the molecules get very spread apart and that's called rarefraction. So you have individual molecules dancing around their equilibrium, but there are periods where they are compressed, where they are tight together, and there are periods where they're rarefied or spread apart. And that is a wave propagation. So that is a sound wave headed out. The air molecules around your voice, around your, around your mouth, don't travel to your friend's ear across the room what happens is they start a chain reaction. They push on the molecules next to them and sounds go back and forth. The air molecules go back and forth and back and forth, but you have a wave of compression and rarefraction and a sound is sent out to your friend's ear across the room. And that's how sounds travel.